Hi everyone, Peter Mullen here. Now, some great advice from a patient of mine, Lynn, last week. Lynn said, and it's such a good point, she said, we are, uh, we are all in an unusual season at the moment, but that this season will pass. So we can do this. Now, I'm hoping that you're all getting some great ideas, tips, and inspiration from some of my amazing patients and friends. And on how to particularly stay fit, sane, and healthy through these changing times. Now today I'm speaking with Tom Russell. Now Tom is a physiotherapist and also the managing director at NextGen Physio Katara. Now I'm particularly keen to talk with Tom today about what's changing in his world as a physiotherapist given that it's always been such a hands-on profession. Um, and Tom is definitely a man after my own heart. All physios all treat their patients holistically. So, yeah, I'm really keen to talk with Tom. Hello. How are you going? Hey, mate. Yeah, good to see you. Good to see you, mate. We yeah, you found look, somewhere. I've got a good spot just in the corner here with a nice connection. <laughs> so someone walking past would just be wondering what all this is about. I know the account, there's an accounting firm just here, but I thought they weren't open, but they are in there. They're cool <laughs> with me sitting here like a bit of a bogan. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks so much, Tom, for talking with us this morning. Now, um, you're working as a physiotherapist. So what's, yep. what's, what's changing in your life as in practice at the moment? I think, um, obviously, we're having to be a lot more focused on hygiene and our hygiene procedures, which is something that we did anyway, but we've had to amp that up a lot just to make sure that we've got a nice, clean environment for our patients to come into um, and then also offering telehealth, which has been really, really big for us. So even though we're still seeing patients and helping our patients face to face in the clinic, sometimes it might be more appropriate for them to do a video or phone chat so we can continue their rehab or exercise plan and just continue to help them. So that's probably the main thing that's changed is how we're managing the hygiene in the clinic and then also offering telehealth. Fantastic. And Tom, we were talking about this in the break before. So as physios and like as naturopaths, like we, we're, we still play a very important role in the healthcare system because while we're all focused on the coronavirus, etc., there's still all your normal day-to-day -day health issues going on. Like we're still seeing people for gut issues, autoimmune, mm. all those sorts of conditions have taken the back burner a little bit because everyone's so much focused. And I'm sure with you guys too, like you're still getting people that are injuring themselves. You've still got workplace yeah. stuff going on. Yeah, a hundred percent. I think, and we were talking about this before, Pete, like ethically and morally, it's always a challenge when you're a professional, like in this current climate, um, seeing people face to face, but all the correspondence that we've got is, you know, our job is to keep our essential workers being able to continue to do their thing. So um, yeah. there's also that element where, you know, if someone really, really injures their ankle, for example, and they might have a choice or a decision whether they go to a physio or go to the hospital or to the doctor, um, you know, if we weren't open, that, that decision wouldn't be there. So there would be a massive burden on the healthcare system. Look, which... that, 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 is, that is a massive point. And I think... Um... I think people need to know that, you know, you're still open, we're still open, we're still providing the same service that we always do. And we can be a really great um, adjunct to the healthcare system as we always are, but even yeah. more so in these times, rather than to, you know, present at the hospital with injuries that you, you could be very well we taken care yeah. of. But, yeah, yeah, that's cool. Yeah. And tell me, so with the, with the telehealth, like physios obviously always been such a hands-on profession and, and you are still doing hands-on there as well. You mentioned before you're still doing dry needling if you need to. You're still doing the manipulations that you need to do. Mm -hmm. um, when you do a telehealth conference with someone, um, a telehealth consult, what sort of, um, what are you recommending? Like, what are, are you? It's interesting. Yeah, we were talking about this the other day. It, it sort of takes the focus away, and I think this can be a good thing for a lot of patients. It takes the focus away from what we do specifically for our patients and it's more about what they're going to do for themselves. So it shifts the attention even more so than, 
you know, what we already focused on, which is it shifts it to exercise because we can't, you know, we can't for some of our patients do manual therapy or dry needling, that passive stuff. It really yeah. pushes them to focus on exercise and we have a look at, you know, their technique with particular movements um, and we sort of become, I think, almost exercise counsellors, which, you know, I don't like to say that we're experts in counselling, but more just motivating our patients to, you know, both to help them with their particular injury that they're seeing us for, but generally just to move more and all the benefits that go along with that from a mental health point of view. Um, we've seen that a lot and we are worried just generally for the wider community and how they're coping mentally. So yeah. if we can have a role there via telehealth to get our patients to move more and exercise more, not just associated with their particular problem, I think that's massive, massive at the moment. So, yeah, we don't need to see our patients face to face to do that. Yeah. And I look, I think uh, I'm really enjoying talking with you this morning. Like it definitely, uh, uh, too. <laughs> <laughs> definitely a man of, a man of my ilk, like that's the such a big thing with what what we all we do as well is we're encouraging patients to take responsibility for their own health and you know maybe that's a positive to come out of this whole situation that we can learn from coming and seeing professionals but then we have to go home like ourselves but then we as patients we have to go home and then implement those things so I love um and and that and and mental health and exercise go hand in hand you know so it all 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 comes together. Now, we share the same accountant. We do, yep. Yep, yeah. so Steph, I was, talking to Steph <laughs> I was talking to Steph from GrowthWise earlier this week, and um, she said that one of the things that you've got her whole team, because her whole team is all working remotely from home, and she, she said that you've got them all on a death threat to um, do a couple of activities every day. So can you just explain what it is you've got them to do? Yeah, definitely. Well, a bit of background about um, GrowthWise, and we do this for a number of companies. Under normal circumstances, we do physio to your desk where we go to companies and help them with, you know, trying to get them to move a lot more because of the sort of sitting environment that, that they're in. We do massages at their desk, which is really, really awesome. But all these businesses essentially have closed. So we wanted to be able to help um you know, these companies continue to move. And it's something that we did with GrowthWise anyway, and I was so proud of them that they kept doing their squats at, I think it's at 10 a.m. and 4 p.m. every day. And look, it's non-specific, um, but it's just a way to get them to continue to move, and they all do it together. So they got that nice little kind of community aspect with each other. They're still staying in touch. And it's something that's non-work related, so it's a little bit of fun. They're moving. Um, I think it's fantastic, and I'm really proud of them that they're still doing it. So, what, what have you actually what have you actually got them doing? So they're doing 20 squats twice a day, and there's a song by Luke Million, and it's like a remix of Arnold Schwarzenegger. You have to look it up. I... Staying down, up. It's really funny. It just makes it a little bit more interesting than just doing 20 squats twice a day. So look up Luke Million. I was actually, I was, just as a joke, I was going to ask you if you could give us a few bars, but you don't have to do that, mate. Oh, look, singing's, oh, um, I've got <laughs> Steph. <laughs> so um, one, of the things, one of the things Steph said to me is um, that the staff have really enjoyed taking photos of themselves or they are actually, actually, they're actually keeping themselves accountable every day because come 10 o'clock and 4 o'clock, if someone hasn't signed in, you know, they're going to get harangued by the rest of the staff for not doing their squats. So, yeah, accountability that's, that's accountability. Well. I love it. Everyone <laughs> in the comments is saying that I should do it, but it's not happening. <laughs> <laughs> maybe Danielle can join. Maybe we can have a third person join the live video and they can do it. <laughs> well, I think that's not a bad idea if you can con someone into it. <laughs> oh, funny. Now, now Tom, um, so what, what recommendations? So, for someone listening there today, what can they be doing? at home like what would be a good tip for them as well as moving more yeah i think that the easiest thing for people for that are working from home and this is a really good way to not over complicate is make sure that you don't sit for more than 20 minutes or change where you are working every 20 minutes so 
think everyone gets focused so much on the specifics of exercise and exactly yeah. what we should be doing. But sometimes, you know, it's just about changing our posture and changing our position, both to benefit our physical body, but even from a productivity point of view, you know, human yeah. beings aren't great at doing things, you know, repetitious activities for more than about 20 minutes. So from a productivity point of view, as well as how good it is for us physically to get up and change our positions, following that 20 minute rule is so, so, so easy. And it doesn't really matter necessarily what you do. Like you can put your arms above your head, you can rotate, you can squat, you can jump up and down. It's, it's not super important. We just know that changing our position helps our body in so many different ways, you know, for our neck pain, our back pain, hips, even stuff that you look at more, Pete, like, you know, with it internally with our guts and just everything. It's so it's yeah. so good blood flow around the body. It's good for our brain. So I just urge everyone to look at the 20 minute rule. Don't stay, stay in the same position for more than 20 minutes. So if you're working on a laptop and you're sitting at your, at your dining table, take your laptop somewhere else, go for a little walk, sit outside for 20 minutes, then go onto your lounge. You might lay on your tummy and do some work. I just think changing your posture is so important, particularly, you know, in the current climate when everyone's working from home. Yeah, particularly when people are going to be more restricted in their space. So it doesn't matter what you do, as long as you move, change your posture every 20 yeah. minutes. That's, that's fantastic, Tom. Thank you so much for that. That's something I, I love. I love these great tips. They're quite literally, someone can be doing that now while they're watching this. So if someone's sitting in there now, get up and change your posture and you've done it already and yeah. you only got to do it again in 20 minutes time yeah and you can you know you can set an alarm on your phone or even i've spoke to people about putting um something like a visual cue on your computer so i've got yeah. this roll of red sticker like sticker dots just put that on the top like one of the top corners of your screen and it's just that that colour, you will associate that with the 20-minute rule and it will just help you get up and move around a little bit more. I think the visual cue helps people. Yeah, makes it fantastic. Really yeah. Fantastic. 20-minute rule. Well, I've got, um, I've got um, a couple more questions for you. So we're coming up to the um, famous Fast Five. So are you ready? I'm ready. All right. Favourite exercise? Outdoor walking or outdoor running. Love getting outside and moving. Favourite vegetable? Green beans. Favourite splurge? Oh, God. I'm going to get in trouble for this. Oh, I don't know if we're talking about splurges in food, but I love KFC. I know you're going to get cranky at me. <laughs> and I'm a health professional too, but, uh, yeah, I love it. I can't That's help it. No judgment, Tom. And it is a splurge, right? <laughs> and this is we'll let we'll let um your followers particularly comment on on the relevance of that. So no <laughs> doubt you'll get some um flack. Yeah, um, definitely. Favorite health supplement? Um, I take a, like an immunity booster supplement. I think that's for me, especially at the moment. But even generally, like I work really long hours, so having something just to keep my immunity ticking over. I still eat heaps of fruit and vegetables, but I yeah. think, you know, still working big hours and exercising help heaps. You've got to have that immunity happening. Absolutely. And it's relevant at the moment. And, for keep, sure. and keep in mind, I can help you with that as well. No, don't worry. <laughs> I think we <laughs> so I didn't want to name yeah. which one I was taking because I'm like, I'm taking the wrong one. <laughs> Well, after the KFC debacle, I don't, I don't know what else you can say. We can only go up from there. <laughs> That's on one thing. One thing you can't live without. Um, and I know this is a little bit sappy, but I am going to say Danielle, my fiance, especially. Um, and I was talking to Dana about this um, when the initial lockdown happened at Next Gen. It was you know, pretty full on and emotional and we weren't sure what was going to happen. I was really lucky to have the support of Danielle. I definitely, definitely could not live without her and that's especially been apparent in the last couple of weeks. So I'm going to get some good brandy points for this. <laughs> He's like, you better mention me in the interview. <laughs> and just to finish up with Tom, um, what what's your number number one health tip? Number one health tip, I'm going to go off um, 
a little bit away from what we we're talking about before, which is the exercise thing. Just really tune in with your mental health, and if you have a something that's bothering you, make sure you talk about it. I think that's the number one thing for me. It doesn't matter um, what's going on physically. I'm just standing up. Um, <laughs> if you're not looking after what's happening in here, um, I think everything else is irrelevant. So my my number one health tip is. You know, if you do have something that's bothering you, make sure you talk to someone about it. That's fantastic. Thank you. Thank you so much for the for this morning. Now, can you just finish up just with a couple of bars from um, that song? Yeah. Down, up. <laughs> Down, <laughs> up. That's all you're getting. More energy. That's, that's awesome. More energy. More energy. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Thank you so much. Cheers. Our pleasure. Bye. Bye. See you guys.